doesn't. Could have been a doctor, but I can't stand the sight of blood. Could have been a poet, but I don't know enough about love. Why? Just simply why? I mean, why? I mean, why? I mean, why bother? <laughs> you know, I mean, really, all of this is like that's that's you know, I think that's a good question to ask anybody. You know, it's like when you get to be our age or something. I mean, why bother? I mean, why why be out here? You know what I mean? I think that's a good question. I don't really have the answer for it, but I think it's a good question. Sorrentino, I'm a singer, songwriter. Rob Ruiz, I play bass. My name's Ken Susan, I'm the drummer. Steve Lee, I'm the uh, lead guitarist. The guitar player. And the backing vocalist. Well, one of them. And one of the background vocalists. The harmonica player. And the guy who probably irritates Dan the most. Back on tour. I've quit three times. Bon vivant. <laughs> tour is about having fun. Tour is about just getting out and doing the thing that you love to do and while you have a chance to do it. I do want to give kudos to our, our guitar player in California who couldn't make us uh, make it uh, with us to, to Edinburgh. So in my hotel room, I took a couple of hours and I drew this lifelike caricature of him. So, you know, you can just kind of put it up there next to the castle. This is Howard. It looks exactly like him. Hi, Howard. That's it. Two hours? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Depending on who books the gig, you go and you interface with everybody. So I'll go and I'll find out who I get the free beer tickets from, how many free beer tickets I get, and then I'll come in and start, start set up my uh, gear. And kind of just take it from there. What's the cover charge? How much does it cost to get in? That's always something I think about because I wonder if it's what they're charging too much for. So are we worth that price? Or what's the price of the beer? We get free beers. Who's the opening band? Are we the opening band? What time do we go on? It was out on sunset, out in West LA. Saw a body moving now about a block away. It was close to midnight. Neon light to shine. She looked like California, baby. In the summertime, I said, I love This gig has been a 
erased from my memory banks. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? That Leeds. was uh, Leeds. Well, yeah. Oh, you know what? We have the from the San Francisco Bay Area. So let's get back here. Kind of my template for songwriting was kind of Ray Davies and acerbic. Your just kind of your own look at the world. The music that I was raised on and stuff, a lot of it was British and stuff, and I really liked the, those type of writers. Fun, sad. Uh, let's, let's try. Wearisome. Let's try something naughty. And if you're a funny person, or if you have thoughts that, that lean that way, then then that'll come out. Or if you have, you know, or if you're sad sometimes, and I often find that sad and funny run very close together, as they say. And so live though, you're gonna play harp and beginning, harp and end. The song Hemingway is probably my favorite newer dance song. I was listening to to Free at at the time, and I kind of and I and I had the lick to start with. It's a rocker. It has the harp. I like songs that rock and have harp. The lyrics are a lot different than anything. I mean, I could tell a story about wanting to be like Ernest Hemingway, keeping things short and sweet, like Ernest Hemingway. Could have been a movie star, but I did not have the looks. That uh, kind of the story of our lives. Now we're getting a little older, so it's it's a story about uh, a song about Hemingway, but also our uh, uh, still trying to make it in this business, you know. But who knows life's wrong? Try to be your lover, now I know I'm not that strong. You'd say stuff in really short sentences, they were very clean and pristine, and so I just wanted to kind of do something like that. I'm very big on like the road not taken. All the stuff that you could have done with your life that you didn't end up doing. I know that you got something that's dying to say. I think a lot of people are like that. They wish they were, they'd be different than they actually were or are. People at Derek are friendly. I mean, they live on one of God's little acres. They should be happy. If you like it so much, why don't you move here? I might. I might even move here. As a matter of fact, if they would let me live here, <laughs> I might move here. Hi, I've got no sleep. I need a shower. But we're having a blast. Woohoo! We met this guy, a very cool guy named Noel, and he has a little fitness class and uh, I guess, you know, warm ups and stuff like that. And he's going to use a couple of our songs to get people in top physical health, which is kind of the opposite of what rock and roll usually does, I guess. Sometimes it's it's better to give than what we get out of it. <laughs> it, it is, exactly. Something positive. Which, which song do you reckon we use? He told me he was going to use uh, Love Is All. We're telling you, so you know, I'm, I'm happy to know people would be keeping fit with Love Is All. Do you think they do anything more than just keep fit to love it all? I can't, I can't answer that. People kept buying me beers. Yeah, they kept coming. But you know what was great was that we drank a dry of Guinness. That, that was amazing. Is unbelievable. That place there, went up, I got the last pint of Guinness in that place. And that's saying something. Steve came back with that sad puppy dog look on his face. 
there's only one left. Sadly. <laughs> Sadly oh, thank you, Steve. Yes, yeah. thank you, Steve. <laughs> Well, here we are at the Wemus Bay Ferry, waiting for the ferry to come, take us over to the Isle of Butte. Beautiful, beautiful country. This is great. Can't wait to rock tonight. Playing on a ferry is, a, is an art. Right, Dan? Yeah, we've played on ferries before. Yeah. In fact, Rob's played on, on, on top of ferries before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks like our ride is about to arrive. You shouldn't talk in an English accent in a foreign country. <laughs> Sounds lame. Rob has issues, major issues that need to be discussed and handled, and we'll try to deal with that as the trip progresses. until you're no longer the king of your castle. <laughs> Only because it's in this uh, little industrial park. Yeah. It's all about it looks, Rob. It looks like I've been told by Alan McAvoy to play it. That's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> we're in, um, where the hell are we? What's the, what's the name of this bay? Eric? Ed, Edric. Edric Bay. Um, Emric? No, it's not Edric. Oh, fuck you. you don't know shit. This, this is what it's all about. And we see some people will try to make it over from um, the other side, I guess, and they crash their boat right here. Just like at home, Point Reyes. Just because of the sheep? Yeah. Did yeah. you? Yeah. See them there? Yeah. That's standing stones. They're Neolithic, they're 3,000 years. That's what I thought you'd stop for. I thought, is it the sheep or is it the stop for? <laughs> What's he doing with that one sheep? <laughs> Why are you so fucking interested? <laughs> <laughs> We don't know, but we're at this castle with an honest-to-God boat. The real deal. This is phenomenal. This is so cool. It's three pounds, but I think I'm going to pay it. You pay it. I got You guys been into a castle before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were in uh, Edinburgh a couple years ago. 
This is my pocket for my pounds and guitar picks, you see here. You gotta have your guitar picks and your pounds together. This is my extremely festive purple wallet. If you could, uh, if you could pick your favorite place to do a gig, like on a ferry or a castle, where would it be? Would it be somewhere like a castle? Castle. Hands down. Castle. Bye Butte. Bye to Butte. It was a beauty. It was a beauty, eh? Some of the people weren't so beautiful. We were managed by one guy at Bill, Bill Graham, and we set up a bunch of showcases. We went down to LA a bunch of times and uh, you know, try to get a record deal and you'd almost get signed and then something didn't work out and it was all about getting that because you basically, you had to get signed to really make it, you know, they, they were the bank. And now it's changed to the point to where you don't need to do that anymore. In this modern age, we've been able to put out our own records and whenever we want to, whenever I want to. I mean, we have 10, 10 albums out and if I was on a major label, I would never, never have done that, I don't think. And you know, I just make them and I sell them the way I want and one day I'll be off the credit card. Questions? Yeah. No, no, because I'm, 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 I'm gonna say nasty shit about all these guys and I want to be private. Tell us how you really feel. That's right. <laughs> Fuck off. You pick up new guitar, you just kind of work it in, see if it talks to you, see if it's working properly. Still haven't had a really oppor good opportunity to see what it can do yet, but we'll find out maybe tonight. This is a um, 1983 uh, Squire Telly that I just bought on e eBay before I came over because it was only it's only 248 bucks, and then I put a brand new um, Seymour Duncan pickup right here because the other one was crap. And these guitars are you know they're pretty cheap, but back in the um, 80s they, they like, made them really good. So we're just putting good pickups. Um, they work really great. Chili, chili, chili. Yeah, this is a uh, 1976 Gibson Thunderbird. My grandfather actually bought me this, and it's one one of my most prized possessions. I'll never probably get rid of this space. The Gresh 6120, Chet Atkins 64. Uh, this is fairly new to me too. Fucking off. <laughs> This is a real, real sweet guitar. It, I, I did a session with it uh, not too long ago, and it actually does a Tele, a Fender Telecaster, better on record than a Fender Telecaster does. Because I had a Telecaster and said, nope, hang with that Gretsch, because man, that thing is sweet. Yeah, a 1976 Gibson Thunderbird. I got this in the, uh, California, and uh, it's been through a lot of different tours with different bands. Next, next been broken a couple of times. I painted it a couple of different colors, and uh, it sounds pretty darn good. Just old, old, you know, vintage premiere sound, that old woody sound of a drum. It's not a high-tech, real modern sound. 66 Rickenbacker 33012. And I want to thank Ian again. He's my man for uh, letting me use him. I bought this uh, 74 with a uh, Blackface Deluxe Reverb for 350 bucks. Uh, this is one of my signature sounds. Um, it's been been with me obviously for a long time and it, it's a jewel. This is my newest addition to the Steve Lee archives. This is a 62 SG Les Paul Custom that I just picked up in Berkeley, California. It was a lot of money, I won't tell you how much, but 
it's worth a lot more money than I paid for it, so. And since I only paid 245 bucks for it, but I got 300 bucks into it and someone steals it, I don't care. Or if I, you know, if I get really rocking tonight, and I'm rocking hard, and I just like throw the guitar down, or I have to put it through Kenny's bass number or something, it doesn't matter to me, because it only costs 300 bucks. It has a kind of a growly bass tone. I have like 15 bass guitars, and depending what clothes I wear, uh, <laughs> dictates what bass I play. That's why I bought it. I bought it especially for this tour. This was for the Sorrentino's Jumping Back Tour 2000 and that's it. Enjoyed my shower immensely. After five days is about time. I, yeah. I, I need it, baby. Motor. Where do I sleep? Where do I eat? Yeah, that's your staple. And where's my jumping bat? Well, you know, it's just trying to make sense out of the whole thing. That's why I. That's why a person. I'll let, that's why I write songs. Is in the process of writing songs, you kind of figure out. You kind of figure out where you're going, what you're going to do. You know, the basic thing is what what does it all mean and does it really matter kind of a thing and that's why I write songs and usually in the process of trying to find out what it means and if it really matters a lot of funny shit happens to you. It's usually what I find anyway. And so what does it all mean? Um, I think we're back to the free, free beer. <laughs> That's good. Not bad. I'll have a plan of Nelson. Yeah. What do you think you're going to launch into straight away? When you start playing? Uh, something fast and hard. <laughs> unlike, uh, unlike a lot of things around me. You've got to start off light. you got a long night ahead of us. Cheers. I know this. Even at over 50, I'm still uh, a kid. I like jumping up and down. I like shaking my head. I like playing loud guitars. The ultimate thing about doing these tours is that you find out it's the same everywhere. People are the same everywhere. It doesn't matter. They were hanging on every word, every nuance, and they got every you know humorous moment or poignant moment. And you can really see it in their face, and that's 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 the beauty of the music. Or I love playing in front of people who've never seen the band because Dan has written a lot of good songs and I want people to hear these songs. I'm not worried too much about being famous at any, anymore or any of that kind of stuff. I just want to get out there and just play music for people and have them like it and um, buy me a beer. They just take, you know, every moment and you can see them, you know, just got a pint, got a cigarette, they're, having, they're living life, you know, they're having fun. It's still a lot of fun, especially from what, with, it's so different from my job as park ranger that, uh, uh, this is something I, I look forward to doing on Friday or Saturday night, you know. We're all here for the same reason, so that's the first start. Figure out just what it's worth. 
men on the golden cab turning avarice to loud that let the rich man walk away when the poor man's got the crowd. to see if they want to rock or they need to rock. Everybody likes to go out, have a couple beers, let their hair down, get crazy. And if you can supply the musical backdrop for them to do that too, and you do a good job, and then maybe even in the process, touch them. It's just, it's indescribable. In fact, it's like what we're looking right behind me. It's just, you can't describe it. It's something you have to see. I mean, touch them somewhere in a musical or artistic sense. Music is just so vast, and I, I want to hear it all. I think uh, we've made a lot of friends over here. Then, then it's all good. I think this is our seventh or eighth time over, and uh, I'd come back. I'm used to the, to the rain by now, you know what I mean? <laughs> we know we can't have good hair days, you know? <laughs> Probably ask for a while, you know, but people ask me, is it all? Holy shit. I don't, I don't think he had on any undies either, from what I could do. Hard as a rock. Hard as a rock. Hard as a rock. The money you save from not buying beers, you, you can, can buy, buy things, like this flying jumping bat, bat. bat. Jumping bat. So, uh, they, I think now might now might be the time for uh, for Rob to uh, to uh, show every, everybody his Loch Loch Ness monster. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Aussie. Good night.